The 20th century has been a significant shift in the literary landscape with Latin America, Africa and Asia emerging as the centers of creative expression. Writers from these countries are pushing for decolonization, challenging European and American literature in their own languages. This process began in Latin America, Africa and Asia at the beginning of the century and was accelerated after World War II. Literary theorists from Europe and America have developed various theoretical formulation including commonwealth literature, new literatures in English and postcolonial literature. The concept of third world literature is seen as a devious device to maintain the hegemony of first world literature and it is implicit in this western conception that the third world too must need some other to define itself indian literature of the 20th century is influenced by decolonization which is crucial for addressing issues such as tradition modernity regional and national identity and the aesthetic of experimentalism and assimilation of indigenous forms the question of how aware and active indian writers are in the process of decolonization is crucial because it directly affects the release of creative energy indian writers after independence have shown a weaker attitude towards militant decolonization which may be why they do not have prominent figures like gabriel garcia marquez and shinwa chibi they often feel that indian literature lags behind the literatures of africa and latin america particularly in genres such as novels short stories and drama singh expresses profound anguish about the loss of nationalist sentiment and nationalism in india arguing that history has not consigned nationalism to its dustbin as a spent force However there have been signs of its resurgence in the latter half of India suggesting that there may be a silent compromise with imperialism the term imperialism is rarely used in intellectual circles now as if the concept itself has ceased to exist the indian independence of 1947 is often compared to the fact that it was granted rather than gained This highlights the difference between granted something and gaining it as the language used to describe these events has changed over the years the swadeshi movement which opposed the partition of bengal in 1905 may have saved indian identity from fragmentation while our consent in the 1947 partition served to shatter it two indian novels kora published in 1910 by rabindranath tagore and samskara published in 1965 by u r anandamurthy both focus on the theme of the search for identity and the crisis of identity the hero of kora tries to become a hindu but is eventually obliged to become an indian while the hero of samskara pranesh acharya attempts to act as a brahmin priest but is left a common human being after his fall each experiences a sense of liberation and each is shocked into such liberation the humanizing aspect of gaur mohan lies in his becoming an indian while the humanizing aspect of pranesh acharya comes about through defying the many taboos associated with his conduct as an acharya both novels constitute an allegory which frederick jameson calls a national allegory however there is a significant difference in question of identity between gora and samskara gaur mohan's last sentence is what i had day and night long to be but was not able to be i have become today today in india every caste is my caste and i can sit down and eat with each untouchable on the other hand pranesh acharya of samskara feels remorse and lightness in the thought he is now a free man relieved of his responsibility to lead the way and relieved of all authority when pranesh acharya goes back amidst the waiting villages he can only say i am lost i know nothing you do whatever your heart say 
on one hand gora declares that he is free no longer fearing polluted or falling from his caste on the other hand praneshacharya's meek freedom is described as a confessional undertone of some existentialist hero of sartus or camus the indian independence of 1947 is a complex and multifaceted story that highlights the importance of identity and the struggle for freedom anandamurthy and tagore both return to india's past in quest of identity but for them the past is something not to be contemplated but simply to be felt samskara bears a clearer stamp of indianness than gora as it has more notes on sanskrit and kannada words in the english translation this may be why samskara is a more indian novel in the eyes of western scholars and readers while gora goes unregarded by them tagore did not wish to be an indian but he wished to be so in his own eyes and not in the eyes of the west gora's proud challenges include not comparing oneself to an alien court not feeling ashamed or proud for the customs faith scriptures or society of the country they have been born in and taking to their bosom with the feeling of strength and pride all that belongs to their country indian writers in english have taken on the responsibility of defining the indian novel which is a significant issue after independence seminars are held in india and abroad to discuss this question and indian writers in english and indian professors of english are kept busy the aim is to prove that indian writers of today have left behind the tradition of the realistic european novel of the 19th century and are constructing a new and indigenous indian narrative style based on the ancient tales and narratives of india in order to avoid lack of practical demonstration indian novels in english today would seem to be more indian than the so called regional language novels an example of this trend can be found in anitha desai's article indian fiction today published in the fall 1989 issue of the american journal daedalus desai cites the indian provenance of the magical realism in salman rushdie's novel shame and observes enger writers returning to an old fashioned style of narrative that is both contemporary and latest if this is indian literature there would seem to be a need to examine the very concept of indian literature as third world literature indian writers often express opposition to colonization in literature believing that only by going through a journey to the west can one return to the east this belief is understandable for those who have been travelers in the west but it is difficult to accept this as the destiny of indian literature some indian writers particularly during their visits to europe and america tried to assure western audiences that a journey to the west is essential for attaining an indian identity Nirmal Verma an Indian scholar resident in Europe recently made similar statements stating that India needed to go through the process of decolonization of the self to regain one's atma tattva or quiddity which only one's own tradition can activate and no foreign agency however words like atma tattva and tradition raise inconvenient questions if atma tattva is not the given atman of vedanta then it is not something to be regained but a consciousness that needs to be constructed and developed in the process of spiritual decolonization the development of such a consciousness is possible only through struggle and struggle with oneself colonialism has represented a particular kind of indian tradition and in response several alternative traditions have been put forward by india in the special issue of daedalus on another india the editorial emphasizes that the distinction of india lies in all that is primordial in that society that is not simply given way for the power of modern technology this image of india that the west has always cherished would be even better place than india itself might be However could this truly be called decolonization neo gandhian intellectuals within india have been constantly campaigning against modernization and development projects in the name of preserving this primordial indian tradition 
In the journal Daedalus, an article by Kathleen Day McCarthy in its winter 1987 issue charted the change in policy effected by the Ford Foundation in its cultural activities in South Asian and Southeast Asian countries beginning in 1967. Under this new policy, greater emphasis was laid on preserving one's own existence and having a name of one's own than on being modern this led to greater attention paid to preserving the ancient traditions of these backward nations it is ironical that america cares more for the past of india than india itself and at the mystery of our tribals and aborigines it is america which is more distressed than we are such is christian compassion the concept of a third world was conceived around this time leading to the creation of a third world literature this concept is a figment of the imagination of the first world which axioms postmodernist formulations on the concept of difference according to the west this difference is the destiny of the east and preserving it would be its ultimate value for the west This view differs from the old kind of Europeanization and Americanization and is seen as another devious vice of colonization. Cultural colonization has become a part of our consciousness lodged in our subconscious and political unconscious. It is so inseparable that we often define our identity in the language of our former colonial masters and through the concepts constructed by them. this pressure has infiltrated the mantra through which we seek to exorcise it indian writers of the post independence era have softened towards colonialism with a certain ambivalence entering their attitudes this ambivalence is often accepted as a characteristic of modernism and a desirable value of modern poetics and aesthetics however the question remains how should we oppose the new onslaught of colonization tradition itself is a reconstruction and the colonialists of yesterday and imperialists of today presents an image of our past that is primitive and an index of our backwardness hindu fundamentalist tradition is one dimensional and narrow a nationalist allegory cannot help us oppose colonialism if we pit an image of our nation against colonialism who would it be the nation of those oppressed by the state and wanting to change it is not fit for human beings the nationalist consciousness that prevailed at the beginning of the 20th century cannot now be revived or invoked the present issue of colonization in india cannot be addressed by claiming that only a small section of society has been colonized superficially this class claims to be the cultural and literary avangarde of india after independence modernizing and developing indian literature decolonization does not mean rejecting the west altogether as many writers have raised their pens against colonization and imperialism it is short sighted to disassociate ourselves from this tradition of the west in the name of a distinctive identity of third world literature while the socialist literature of the second world provided inspiration and energy to this third world literature it is important to remember that the literature of that world is considerably more liberated and exciting today looking at the challenges of the 20th century from this perspective is essential there are no ready made solutions and even if one did there is no guarantee that it will satisfy everyone a writer believes in raising questions and putting things in a certain perspective the 20th century has witnessed two world wars with the rehearsal for a third one now happening before our very eyes it is surprising that we have not yet seen the end of imperialism what was ended is socialism which was once thought to be the future of the world and about which a writer of the west had written I have gone and seen the future and it is working miracles in this context the concept of progress which europe of the 19th century and india of the mid 20th century had such firm faith in is being challenged the model of this pen portrait is paul klee's painting angelus novus which serves an ironic image of history 